From the center of the galaxy, this is The Force Center Show, a show about Star Wars, pop culture, and the ultimate adventure, life itself. I'm Ken Napsok. I'm Joseph Scrimshaw. And I'm Jennifer Landa. And we are here to dive deep like we love doing into a certain aspect of the Ahsoka series. We're going to be looking at the spirit of Anakin Skywalker. What does it mean? What it, is it actually on our screen? We're going to figure that all out. And what's, are the, what are the meanings there? Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and a 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com. Over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. And happy to report we'll have a Force Center recommends a little bit later, a book we think you should try out on us. Joseph, we are going to have a lot of fun doing what we uh, have done for years, but it's <laughs> a renewed energy because we're back in the saddle. That is right. I'm very excited to talk about Anakin Skywalker. But first, I got to give you a, a compliment, Ken. Uh, you said the Ahsoka series, which is a great way to just say the whole thing. Because I keep saying the Ahsoka show, and it sounds like a 70s vaudeville <laughs> show to me. <laughs> the well, it was great show. on the Ahsoka show, you know? Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, the, 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 the Patty Duke show. And, uh, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. and welcome to the stage, Ahsoka. Ba -ba -da -da -da. Wow. Guest uh, starring so. Harvey Corman. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So we are excited to continue to dig into the Ahsoka series by looking at specific aspects uh in this episode we are looking at the spirit of anakin skywalker is it truly a force spirit we'll discuss that we're going to discuss everything about anakin's role in ahsoka we're going to talk some of the big ideas uh but also the fun details as well which we like to do uh boldly we're also going to attempt to contain ourselves to around 90 minutes just going to put that out there to give our episode a ticking clock of tension to see if we can actually make it. There's <laughs> a lot of fun and big ideas to talk about. So I'm going to just start with this big picture question. Jennifer, for you, overall, what is the most interesting or exciting thing to you about Anakin's role in the Ahsoka series? For me, it was the visuals. Uh, mm. I I thought that he looked pretty good. The de-aging looked good in Kenobi, in the Kenobi series. But this really, I mean, he is the co-star of that episode, episode five. Mm -hmm. um, and it just looked, in my opinion, the best that it's looked in terms of the technology. And what that did was it allowed for me to really focus on the story and the characters, as opposed to being distracted by, oh, you know, does his face look accurate? And how is his voice? And blah, blah, blah. And I thought Hayden Christensen did an excellent performance. That was another thing is that it felt, we're going to get into it, but like it mm -hmm. felt like a wonderful bookend moment for these characters that we have watched over the course of the Clone Wars. Oh, and this is a different side of Hayden and Anakin that we had not really seen in live action. So mm -hmm. yeah, it just was, it was much more exciting and thrilling than I initially imagined. Yeah, well, that's great. I think it's really uh, smart to start with the visuals too, because that has been such a question of bringing legacy characters back. And right. I love everything about uh, Anakin and Vader's appearances in Kenobi. The training scene with Kenobi, the flashback, is just uh, thematically, emotionally moving. Uh, but the de-aging for me is like, it's up and down. It's got a little bit of uh, Anakin like pretending to be a kid. It's almost a little bit like, how do you do, fellow Padawans? <laughs> I'm not actually yes. the age I am. Um, <laughs> It, and I thought that the the de aging on the like teaser shot of him in the previous uh, episode of Ahsoka, the part four, mm. you could see the de aging. And then the, the this that entire chapter five, part five, I I didn't see any of the de aging. I think the the shadows, the performance, the different ages, mm. it all hit it. So visually, it was just seamless, and you could just focus on the ideas. That was my visual experience. Uh, Ken, for you, what is the most interesting or exciting thing about Anakin's role in the Ahsoka show? Well, it's, it's interesting, right? We we, we had a, a little bit of a of an idea this was coming because of, you know, one kind of uh, rebelish post from Rosario Dawson <laughs> a couple, uh, maybe even almost right. seemed like a year before the show came out. So yeah. we kind of had this idea this was coming. And, and, you know, even without that this would have made some sort of sense, right? I'm sure it was on a list of predictions and, and Ahsoka bingo cards. So even with that said, that, that you may be, hey, I'm waiting for it. It's a countdown to Anakin. It, it, the most interesting thing story-wise to me was was getting these characters together again and and, and getting them together in some way uh, because of their connection. That makes sense. It's their connection so vital to each other's journey. So it was just kind of this wonderful bonus as a Star Wars fan um, that we never thought we'd be here just with live action, with Ahsoka, 
uh, even Clone Wars season seven. And 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 reminder of the era that we're in, despite you know some misgivings some people might have, or the technical stuff that we do have to worry about. I I agree, it's just getting better and better, which is always. Um, it's good to remind myself that you know that first digital shot of the rock and the scorpion king compared to where we got you know <laughs> it all does get better eventually uh was there and then an exciting byproduct of that is, is like jen you touched upon it is 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 hayden getting to continue his journey back into the role he, he was wonderful in kenobi I, I absolutely love his moments in that series and they are maybe more um vader moments if if you will than anything mm-hmm. else but for me this was the best anakin Hay- hayden was just absolutely wonderful and he sounded very Canadian at times, which was wonderful as well. And for him to come back all these years and just show up and, and do what he did in, in Kenobi was great. But now to actually spend more time on screen in, in a certain way, you know, doing this side of the character and getting connect with, with the Clone Wars in a way, like, you know, there's some there's some Matt Lanter in here. Absolutely is. And it all kind of, as a Star Wars fan, was just that, that fun was the way I, I was looking at it overall. No, that's great. You pointed out, uh, I think, last week that you were hearing a little bit more of Hayden's a little uh, more natural Canadian tone, <laughs> which I've just been too <laughs> absorbed in the character. Oh. And when I was rewatching for this, there is it, it's not this far, but there is a little bit of like that that wonderful deep one of my favorite lines of that. What this is about does verge into is that what this is a boot? Just yeah. a little bit, <laughs> yes. just a little bit. It's impossible. He can't move yeah. that mouth. I didn't hear it at all until you pointed it out. So uh, thank you yeah. for. <laughs> for cursing me with that, Ken. Thank you, or yes, I apologize. <laughs> yeah, I think for me, um, I really want to acknowledge that uh, narratively, thematically, functionally, Anakin is there to uh, do what four spirits have always done, which is to show up when they are most needed. So he is there to support Ahsoka's yeah. journey in Ahsoka's series or show. Uh, I almost feel like I need to put that caveat out because I'm so obsessed with Anakin's role and what it means for him that mm-hmm. I want to acknowledge that I think it is done well that his his first you know point of being there is to be there for Ahsoka. But yeah. I really love what both of you are saying. I think for me, what was sort of meaningful about it after going on you know a long journey with this character and seeing Vader and Anakin not as two separate people as he argues and as Kenobi you know needs to believe for a while. But is the truth that they're just extremes of one person and looking at it from that way, like I've been living with this kid, this character since I was an infant in mm-hmm. his Vader form. And then through all the different versions of him in the prequels, in the Clone Wars animated series, which you so bought in. And this was the first time that you got to see the unified character completely as he is. And what I loved is that it was all of the traits that make this person who he is, whether he's Anakin or Vader, uh, his compassion, his anger, his resolve and determination, his need to sometimes just break things down and see things as really simple binary choices, um, is who Yang puts it, his intensity. Mm -hmm. Those were all just traits that were Mm -hmm. on display that could be good or bad. And that's what was so fascinating to me about it. It wasn't that like, oh, he got angry. Here comes Vader. It's no, he's intense. Mm -hmm. And intense can be good or bad. And Vader is such uh, one of the original characters of Star Wars. And then Anakin, you know, the the lead of the prequels in many ways, he's he can be looked at as like this Rosetta Stone of Star Wars of Mm -hmm. everything that can be is in this guy. And to see him just have all of these traits and they can be destructive as we've seen as vader or like in these episodes they can be constructive they're helping people but they're just traits and what he does with them is what matters and that's what was really beautiful to me about seeing him as a unified character i really love what you're saying there and and curious jen your thoughts as well because i'm someone who has has said and, and and podcasted and written about the war that goes on between anakin and vader so it seems like those two that's two separate people but you're right this is the reality it's the two wolves in all of us right <laughs> yes <laughs> coming to roost here and i think that's a, a thing we're going to keep coming back to of just this complete 360 degree view of anakin which was what was so valuable but also part of the lesson that even if you yourself think there's two people inside me that i'm fighting over it's 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 it is about you and your whole being uh the good the bad and, and the otherwise so i love that yeah yeah i'm sure we'll uh we'll get to chat about it more i love to hear uh you guys' thoughts about it um but i do want to acknowledge this because i think uh, i've seen it pop up on social media a little bit uh and i believe i saw an interview with uh with um Filoni and, and hayden as well 
Uh, so the reality of what is going on in, in part five, chapter five, the reality of Anakin's appearance is up for interpretation. Which interpretation do you prefer? A, a force spirit like we've seen of Kenobi, Yoda, Luke Skywalker, uh, a figment of Ahsoka's imagination as she, as she drowns? Uh, is he a manifestation of some element of the world between worlds, just using Anakin's face and existence as a mask? Is he something else? Uh, Jennifer, what interpretation do you like? I like that he's a force spirit there to guide Ahsoka on her journey, not a figment of her imagination. And the way that I would think of it, like for our, our world is when people, you know, fall into a coma and then they have these experiences where they've, you know, encountered an angel or somebody else from their past life who then gives them this life lesson. And then they come out of the coma and they're like, I just experienced life after death. That's kind mm -hmm. of what I would say is that Anakin is her, is her angel there to teach her a lesson. Um, yeah, this an, it's interesting though. I, I don't want to believe that he's a figment of her imagination. <laughs> it's not. This like the, the power of Star Wars is that we can believe that these four spirits exist and are real and can do things to actually make a difference, as opposed to just her imagining it. Yeah, no, I, I really agree, and I, I like uh, com comparing it. I think you know, narratively, uh, spiritually, it is similar to. To a conversation you might have or a vision you might have on the on the edge of death, as people have reported, uh, I, I would be thrilled if a a brooding, intense uh, Canadian visited me in my hour of need. <laughs> um, but but you're right; it is that that's an idea that we can cling to as that is something similar to what people report happening in their reality. But in Star Wars, there are different rules that we've gotten somewhat used to uh, up to a point about how, how all this works. So, Ken, where do you go with it? Uh, first of all, Jen, you pitched a wonderful Hallmark movie that we could watch during the holiday season. <laughs> oh uh, the Angel in the Coma. Uh, it's amazing. Uh, yeah, I, I, up until the final shot, I was going along with this idea that it was a manifestation of the world between worlds pulling from Ahsoka's soul, so to speak. Uh, but then that final shot uh, made me want to go, which is it was force spirit all the way through. But that's the beauty of this. Uh, it's 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 up to interpretation. I hope we never get a direct answer. And Dave seems like the kind of cat that won't give that direct answer. He'll talk about what it means, and 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 that's mm -hmm. what we're here for today. I, you know, we're gonna discuss that end shot more and everything like that. But there was something about there was some piece in that shot that made me want this all to be some some real journey for both of these characters and not just uh, all of it there for a lesson for ahsoka but the world between worlds is the uh, is is it, it's it's a wonderful intriguing arena to play around in as a star wars fan and as a star wars creator it could be all of it it definitely was real for ahsoka back then right she was mm -hmm. saved uh by this so there's some reality to it we have jason hearing the lightsaber sound so it, it's a little mind bending and, and that's what i love about it because at the end of the day it is then how it affects you and and what it means to the story versus yeah. the reality and, and i think the instinct for the creators to say it's open for interpretation is great to keep people focused on the ideas and the themes and the characters mm -hmm. and the lessons and not getting to uh pedantic about rules of this very spiritual side of right. star wars and for me, I like, is there literally a portal to the world between world underneath those waves? Is Anakin such a powerful force spirit that he could sort of pull her into that? Like, what exact, how exactly is uh, Jason hearing that? All that stuff, I'm really happy to have be like, I don't need a super specific technical answer. I do not want a world between worlds cross section book that yeah. explains <laughs> all the details. Go down uh, these stairs right here. <laughs> but I do find myself saying like for my head canon, whatever other people want to believe i'm not trying to have a, a a battle to determine correctness but for myself i it, in my head it is absolutely anakin it is his force mm -hmm. spirit it, as much as kenobi appearing to luke on dagobah is kenobi uh making mm -hmm. a choice um be, for me it makes everything richer because he is absolutely being there for ahsoka and he is giving her what she needs but there is personal stakes in it for him if it is his force spirit and in the particular moment that is far richer for me if this is the character of anakin is it feels to me like he gets to the point where he realizes she needs to confront vader to process her trauma mm -hmm. i don't really want to go full vader but i'm going to 
make myself slash let myself re-experience the extreme of what I can be because it's what she needs to see. And when mm-hmm. she chooses to live and throws aside the blade, the way he stumbles back, it feels so personal. That doesn't feel to me like a spirit guide. That feels like I let myself be the worst of myself. I let I filled myself with disease because it's what the mm-hmm. person in front of me needed. Mm-hmm. And now I'm letting this disease leave my body and I can go back to being the person I want to be, the person I always should be. It feels so real and so emotional for him mm-hmm. in Hayden's performance, the way he stumbles back and is able to let the evil and the hate go. It's so beautiful. And to me, that's just much richer if that is a four spirit saying, I am everything Anakin ever was. I can be this, don't want to be, but I did it for you. I, I can get behind that for that moment. Uh, and, and then even the one, the one we were talking about and joking about, the Aboot moment is is <laughs> is such a, it's a lived in moment for that character for me. Like, And, and I don't think it's him. Yeah, I think I saw some tweets reading it as like, him being defensive and everything but but there's some control in that of just like is that is that what this is about like, mm-hmm. did you did you bring me back here for this for me for my life or yours and 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 he needs to you know it's not like i don't think anakin's working through that side of him as much as she's working through that side of him like like you said so i love that and leading up to the moment there's there's um there's a real choice she makes and therefore they the, the pull back the stumble moment is is a moment of uh of clarity for for her in a moment of, of maybe teaching victory for him is how I kind of read that too. So I can follow. Yeah. You that I, yeah. I feel like it, it, as Anakin and then when he takes on the, the Vader mode, he's trying to teach her the same lesson, but it really is that like, Oh, you need to see Vader. I think that's that, that sort of defensiveness and the sadness of, is that what this is about? Not a boot about is, uh, Oh, I have to show you that side of myself. Cause that's the only way that you're going to be able to process this lesson. And that's what you need. Uh, okay. Yeah, just love it. Jennifer? And I really like, as a testament to Hayden's performance and also the visual effects, the way it almost like it inhabits him, right? Like you're talking about. And it's like it when he goes to that that dark side, it, you see it, it's like it comes up and then the it, like the color leaves his face and the performance in his body relaxes. It's like both of those things, mm-hmm. the visual effects and his performance are working so well together to show that, to, mm-hmm. to demonstrate what you're talking about. That he's it's not, a, it's, it's a, not like he really is that. It's just that he's, he's conjuring that for her. Yeah. 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 They just like, lets it, lets it in, you know? Mm-hmm. It, mm-hmm. And yeah. And it, it, it is just such a great performance of what it feels like when you know you've reached a peak of anger and it would be comfortable to stay there, but you have to let it go. You know, um, maybe, maybe I'm being too honest, but I, you know, have those moments where you're fighting with someone you love and you know, you don't want to keep fighting, but it's too scary to deescalate. And you just really <laughs> have to let yourself like deescalate. Cause you know, it's right. It's a beautiful performance of, of that emotion that, that I've experienced. Uh, hopefully <laughs> not the only one. <laughs> Yeah, no, and 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 the next time you're in that situation, follow Hayden down that path. I think it's one of the finest acting moments in the series, and I, I actually really love that you're choosing to to highlight it here. Uh, it, it's Hayden really getting to play with this, and 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 we all we were all there. We all know what 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 a lot of the critics said in in, in 02 and 05, and maybe you know uh, it's, it's part of what George's approach was. That I, so I really liked him getting this chance to dig in on these kind of levels. And I agree. Yeah. I, I I like the idea of like, oh, you need the monster. I'll show you the monster. Cause it is part of who I am. And you're saying some truths about that. Um, but we're going to get more into about what it is about the choices. So great moment. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, you know, as, as we've talked about uh, on a functional level, Anakin is there to help uh, move Ahsoka's story forward. Uh, Ken, how do you think he does that? What lesson do you think he is truly trying to teach her? I try to see, like I go to the, the end of it in a way um post world between worlds when we've got ahsoka the white right which is there's so much stuff uh excitement and love for this ahsoka the white version uh and everyone's made the gan gan of connections obviously and it's been for years right we've been waiting for since the end of rebels we've been seeing this kind of stuff i go to that moment because she kind of emerges to me connected with the bigger picture the pergol the, the solution not the fight and that's kind of where i think what was that I, I took from a lot of what was going on? At least it was a valuable lesson. You know, you can go with the save what you love, not fight what you hate thing, which is powerful mm-hmm. for a reason why it's brought up a lot. Um, here's that great moment of, of 
thinking there's a price to be paid or they're at least discussing the idea of there's a price to be paid. And, and then, and that, that maybe is a opposite of what the price maybe we think we have to pay. There's a lot of going on with Anakin of like, yeah, we fight for you. Know, you survive by fighting versus, um, Again, going to where it where Ahsoka emerges, she's more connected to a solution that's outside of her own. We've got to stop Thrawn. Got to stop Thrawn. Mm -hmm. Now it's more about we're going to find a way to get there. We're going to find, you know, we're we're going to be okay. <laughs> it's kind of how <laughs> uh, I saw it. So that's kind of why I the big picture of what I thought he was there for. That's great. Uh, Jennifer, what do you feel like the big picture lesson was? I think Anakin needed to be there and she needed him and she needed to see him as a hero. I think that mm. that was really, really important. I feel like she just has, I don't want to say self-doubt because she's very confident, uh, but she also has this fear that maybe that she is the bad that he was, right? Mm -hmm. if, if she's everything that he is, that includes the bad. Is that going to come out in her? How, does she need to stifle that? Which I kind of feel like at the beginning of this series, it really does feel like she's like tense and just not wanting to feel any emotion, right? She's detaching herself from, from a lot of things um, mm -hmm. because she is afraid. So seeing him and it's like, you know, when you have a, a family member, whether it's a parent or something, and maybe you don't like these things about your parent, right? And mm -hmm. you're like, oh, shoot, that is, that's within <laughs> me too. But then you see these beautiful and wonderful things and you're like, oh, I also have that as well. It's much more complicated than just like black and white, right? And mm -hmm. I think that that's really what that, that whole episode is about is going through that journey for her of finding the beauty and the good in him. And especially because like, that's all we've heard about uh, besides the clone wars, but in live action, bad, 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 Anakin fell to the dark side, you know? Right. <laughs> and now we're seeing this, this side that we all knew existed and that we saw in the clone wars animated series. Yeah. Yeah. Which, yeah. Just his performance as uh, Matt Lanter esque uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> Anakin, not that it wasn't there, but he didn't get a chance to play that role. And he, and he did. And this is, is so great. Really agree with everything you're saying. I think there's a, there's a exchange of dialogue between Ahsoka and Hera relatively early on where Ahsoka says in, in the show where Ahsoka says uh, something along the lines of like, you know, sometimes even when you make all of the right choices, it still doesn't turn out well. What do you do then? Mm -hmm. And I think, I think Ahsoka is just twisted herself into knots with all of the, the can'ts and don'ts and shouldn'ts and stops. Mm. And life is complex. You should question things as a Jedi. You should be in a in constant state of like, I'm going to re-examine my assumptions and all that. But I feel like she's gotten herself to the point where she is just so dead inside. And Anakin has this ability, which can be a bad thing, but can also be a good thing to just be blunt and binary of like, you have twisted yourself into knots in the choices live or die literally choose to live because you've kind of lost hope you've lost perspective you got your ass handed to you and you're drowning literally mm. choose to live fight to live do you want to give up there's a little bit of like maybe she just wants to surrender and be done so there's the kind of the literalness of that that live to me mm -hmm. um but i also feel like the I choose to live that she says at the end, what Anakin is trying to say to her is live is this very positive thing. It isn't just about violence. It isn't just win the fight. And it isn't even just physically survive. It isn't the choices die, you know, don't drown or, you know, it's to be alive. And I think that is, is what is the most powerful, interesting thing to me about his lesson mm -hmm. is that she is, she is focused on all the negative on, on die. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think the reason that he needs to show her Vader is that she needs to prove to herself in that moment that she can continue fighting without it being all negative, all violence, all death. It's what Balin accuses her of, mm -hmm. of, yeah, you're, you're fighting like a Jedi to stop bad things, but all fighting is just horrible violence. And of course you chose horrible violence. I, I everybody loves that flash of of Anakin becoming Vader for a moment on Ryloth, mm -hmm. um, but it and it's really really cool. But to me, it's it's just such a great visual from her perspective of can I trust? Like you were saying, Jennifer, any of the good things he taught me, or is every single thing he taught me in the Clone Wars the fruit of the poison tree? Because is every choice he made during the Clone Wars 
about violence and death. And, and I again, I think that's why he has to turn to Vader because he's like, the things I taught you in the Clone Wars are good. I taught you to laugh on the battlefield, even though she's like, what are you laughing about? It's like, I'm surviving. I'm trying to hold on to hope and possibility. And I'm focused on keeping you alive and as many of these troops alive as possible. That's so he taught her good things in the, in the Clone Wars and she can't let herself believe them anymore because they're fruit of the poison tree. So then he just, mm. you know, shows her the, the poison tree of, of Vader. And I, I think what is powerful to me about the reason that she comes out as Ahsoka the White is because he convinces her to open up to joy, connection, possibility. Don't just live. Don't just have a heartbeat. Allow yourself to be alive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and yeah, there's, I, I like what you said about the, the image of Vader on the battlefield. It, it, it's, it's a cool image and Star Wars is built on a lot of wonderful, cool moments too. And, and that was a cool, cool moment, but Vader's his character celebrated in a lot of circles, right? He's the bad guy. The entire uh, world wanted to cheer for at one point, as George mm -hmm. even said, I had to come back and show you all the lesson, <laughs> uh, particularly Revenge of Sith. But I, I, I the, through the, the poison trees, a great way to look at it is this, uh, you know, uh, we know and, and Ahsoka knows she keeps going back to it. Yeah, you were you were all these things. You were the most powerful and, and, and you became too powerful for all of us in, in a way. And, and, and you turn and you fall. And, and I think as we're learning about a well-rounded uh, Anakin, he, you know, that thing of their shared legacy. Uh, but you're more than that because I'm more than that. Mm -hmm. And not every choice I made directly led to Vader. Not every choice you have made or will make is going to lead down this one path. Um and I think uh, there was great value in that uh, and, and love all those little moments that they, they had. Cause he's speaking a lot of truths, but you know, even I'm watching it going, well, I don't trust you Vader. That's you I know? think what's really powerful about it. It is such a cool image. And we've seen, you know, other images that flash between Anakin and Vader mm -hmm. over the years, you know, particularly in the clone wars animated series, or even the, the infamous phantom menace uh, teaser poster of the innocent yeah. little kid with the shadow of Vader. There's yeah. always this ominous implication that we are watching this child, this teen, this young man make bad choices that are going to lead to him being Vader. Mm -hmm. And she's watching him march into war and be blunt about it. But I think for me, my reading of the episode is he's teaching her good things. He's teaching her things that she needs to know. So for once, that sort of that vision of ominous uh, shadow of Vader over Anakin is that's Ahsoka's fear. Mm -hmm. he's not doing anything in that moment. That's like, yep. And that choice is going to lead to Vader. Mm -hmm. It's that she can't hear his lesson because all she sees is the shadow of Vader. So he's like, all right, I'll show you. I'll go full shadow. Then here you go. <laughs> Never go full shadow. Never go full shadow. Yeah. Um, it, and then I think, you know, it's very classic uh, Star Wars moment of, of her defeating him, but choosing not to, to strike, not to yeah. kill him. And I think there's that, like you can fight without it all being negative. Ba I think it's a Balin is wrong moment of mm -hmm. you can fight to stop bad things. It's not bad to fight always. You are still you. Like, look, if you can fight me, fight the worst thing in your life, the worst thing maybe that ever happened to you and still control yourself and still be you, mm -hmm. then you can trust yourself, Ahsoka. You can trust yourself to be in conflict because you're not going to do what I did. It's it's not a guaranteed slip into the dark side. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. um, so what does part five of this uh, Ashoka, Ashoka series in general tell us about who Anakin really is? Um, I think it is a kind of a, a complete uh, portrait, uh, a well-rounded portrait of the character. Mm -hmm. uh, but Ken, what mm -hmm. did you get if you just watched part five and said, this is an essay on who mm -hmm. this man ultimately is, who would you think Anakin Skywalker is? Uh, uh, this might be the most rewatch episode in my future. I, I, I do, I do absolutely love this episode. And it's funny. I, my, that was my first note too. more well-rounded. 
just a well-rounded <laughs> more and he's not all anger and hate and fear and he's a man who made his own choices and that's something we'll have to come to terms with right we we, we are our own choices destiny and fate and, and hard wiring might make them complicated and we might have those fears we keep joking other center at times turned into mom center or parent center or you know hard wiring center of mm -hmm. we all got things we got to overcome but that the, the, there's still our choices and, and anakin made his his own and i think there's some of that at play here where even he's yeah, we got the Kenobi version, which is is beautiful. We spent a lot of time in that. I'd love to co contrast and compare those down the line. We, we'll still got mm -hmm. we got more Anakin, uh, modern Anakin content coming. Um, where there's that that like like you said earlier, Anakin kind of saying, "I did this, I did this," and and and, and kind of you know hitting Kenobi on those levels. And this one's more of a no, like I I did this. Uh, it's he says it, it's, it's Jedi. It's our job to lead. That doesn't mean we don't make mistakes. There's a lot of that. Um, and 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 the conversation about does that bother you that you've made mistakes and our mistakes have cost lives and 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 I, I just think there's some there's great powerful moments that with Anakin just being shown as as he was everything and, and then made his own choices and you can't hold yourself to those choices those are his yeah yeah how how do you feel about who Anakin is according to this episode Jennifer well rounded that's that's a great way of expressing it. Dave Filoni recently talked about Anakin's return. Now we're getting some more interviews with, with him. <laughs> um, and he shared about how when we first hear about Anakin Skywalker in A New Hope, Obi-Wan painted a picture of a man who was an honorable Jedi Knight. And he said that, you know, when he was a kid, he was like, whoa. What, what must he have been like? Mm -hmm. He must be the greatest Jedi ever, right? And I think, for, uh, for, yeah, I think I, a lot of us felt like that. And so he's, Dave Filoni said that he's kind of honoring that promise that was shared with us from A New mm -hmm. Hope. Here is, here he is. Here is that honorable Jedi Knight, that, that heroic <laughs> side of him that we haven't really gotten in live action. Um, mm -hmm. And I think it was, it was wonderful because, yeah, the prequels, He's a cute kid, <laughs> and then he becomes kind of an angsty teen, and then we see obviously what happens next. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, go ahead, Ken. No, I, yeah, go. I mean, not to suddenly spin off into a great a prequel discussion, but it's so powerful because again, go to that 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 one moment that uh, I think it's from a convention in 05 or so when when George is like, I, I had to come back and tell you all the story because I I don't think you got it. He's the bad guy. He made these choices, right. Right. but but part of that is what you're talking about. Yeah, he goes from the, the kid with hope and wanting to help everyone in the galaxy to to where he is. And and remember at the time, and I, I you know I've talked about this before, but even I was one of those people of like that's what his fall was. He fell to his knees and cried, and he wanted to say, "No, I want him to do power and slice off heads, and that's cool." And that was George's big, big, big point. And, and so to actually kind of finally spend some time with Anakin in this way, I, I like what you're saying, uh, Jen, about Dave saying, yeah, this is that guy. Uh, and we get, we did get a lot of it in Clone Wars and, and, and we never want to sound like we're dismissing animation because those shows, the Clone, Clone Wars and Rebels are mm -hmm. and bad batches. I think my favorite current ongoing Star Wars show. Uh, so they're very powerful things, but there was some, something, something right in our faces to see it. Uh, in this way, it drove a lot of points home, including young Ahsoka. We'll talk about too, in the order and, mm -hmm. and kids fighting and all that stuff. Yeah, no, I think, I think we got to see a well-rounded Anakin in the clone Wars series, but in a specific point in his life where he was a Jedi Knight, he was a husband. He was a brother to Obi-Wan who kind of wanted to be a son to Obi-Wan. He was a father figure to Ahsoka. Uh, mm -hmm. And then toward the end of the clone Wars were ramping up with his fear of loss and his jealousy getting darker and darker. So we got to see lots of aspects of Anakin. Uh, but I feel like in, in this series and in uh, chapter five in particular, I think it just, it, to me, it just like married almost every beat of Anakin Skywalker I've ever seen. Even going back to the Phantom yeah. Menace where he is, he's a kind uh, kid who is compassionate, but even in Phantom Menace, he's blunt and dogmatic and headstrong and like, you know, even his first line to Padme, uh, uh, you know, is is kind of, you know, uh, my name is I'm a person and my name is Anakin. You're already like, all right. All right. Well, kid. And yeah. I love looking at that. Not as like, oh, he was he was really snappy and, and rude and kind of angry about being about his station in life. Like, that's not a sign of his darkness coming. That's mm -hmm. who he is. He's a mm -hmm. multifaceted person who can be blunt. And dogmatic, and again, as Hu Yang says in that great scene, very, very intense. Um, young man, 
intense young man. So I love seeing all of, all all of that be a part of who he is, and then he can choose whether that bluntness, that directness, that he says in that kind of Vadery voice uh, when he's attacking Ahsoka toward the end in Vader form, "You lack conviction." Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Anakin never lacks conviction, and that can yeah. be a, uh, that's a that's a powerful trait that can be used for powerful good and powerful bad. And I just love seeing that everything that he is can be used for good and bad. And I think the well-rounded thing is also um, that we we get to see him play the the Clone Wars animated version hmm. of yeah. Anakin. We also get to see him be full, full power Vader um, mm -hmm. in and of himself, uh, you know, yeah. not injured by Obi-Wan. So there's some stuff of just like, well, that's that's cool to see. Um, yeah. but the, the the thing that I think was uh, perhaps most moving to me is if you're if you've been on the Star Wars adventure chronologically, starting with the film that became A New Hope, you know, one of the very first twists in Star Wars that give it great depth is that Vader is the father figure of Star Wars and he's uh, a complicated father figure at best. So mm -hmm. Vader has loomed in our culture as father figure for years and years and years. We got like even down to like the fun, you know, cute books of <laughs> Vader being Leia and Luke's, you know, uh, mm -hmm. a dubious dad. It was <laughs> so, uh, great to see him get to be a good dad because that's a parent child relationship between the master and the apprentice between the the jedi and the padawan and so much of what he's doing is just being a parent to ahsoka so after years of vader is the ultimate complicated father figure to see kind loving but blunt anakin get to be a good dad and be there for his kid was really cool that, yeah, I love all this, and, and and Jen, love to get your thoughts on 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 that side of it too. But um, when something you said there, you know, we you, you going back to the, going back to the prequels. One more swing through there, of that great moment of of Anakin. You know, that's of uh, a boy. My name's Anakin. Uh, Padme's one of the ones that sees who he really is. Right, her final words mm -hmm. are still they're still good in him. Kenobi has to get to that point. Uh, Ahsoka is to that point, and and we we you know Luke sees the the complete well rounded Anakin in the end and that's kind of the lesson there and 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 so if you stop at the dark lord side you're not getting the full picture or if you're palpatine you want to remove every you know ounce of light you, you don't want the full picture of anakin because if he's mm -hmm. full he's 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 uh, powerful in, in a different way um so that that was uh yeah just make you make you maybe think of of that moment in padme and, and what she's able to see and what she knows is there despite all of it uh and, and and that carries through the rest of these characters and this was almost like maybe a, a moment for ahsoka to be like, hey, you, you've kind of always been there. The great rebels moment, the cracked helmet and rebels is mm -hmm. you you expose that person, but that don't don't remember this. Don't forget, remember this is who I am, and carry that forward. Yeah, and I, I know not everybody loves the attack of the clone scene where where uh, Anakin confesses uh, his slaughtering of the mm -hmm. the Tuscans, but I think it is a beautiful moment that Padme is so you know says to be angry yeah. is to be human, and this isn't all you are, and this isn't who you have to be. It's, right. You know, trying to give him room. Jennifer, how did you feel about Anakin as a, a parent to Ahsoka? Do you re read the Jedi Padawan relationship that way or? Yeah, you know, it's so interesting because uh, I initially kind of thought of him as like an older brother. And I know mm -hmm. Filoni and other people have talked about him being this older brother. But I think you make a great point in this parental relationship because I'm an older sister. And there have been times where I've tried to help my younger sister <laughs> guide her on the path. And there comes a point where she, maybe she's not following me or whatever. And I just get fed up and I'm like, all right, just figure it out on your own. Right. <laughs> but as a parent, there is kind of this unwavering, like, you, you just want to be there to support your child. And I mm -hmm. feel like he really offers her that in this episode. And we really mm -hmm. see, and yet maybe he is, I don't know, maybe he's getting a little frustrated where he's like, ugh. Okay, you want to see this side? All right, you know, but he doesn't leave her side. He is there. He sticks through her, which an older brother, I don't have an older brother. I don't know if the older brother would do that, right? <laughs> so I would argue it definitely is more of a parental relationship with their child. Yeah, I feel like it's a fascinating part of the relationship because the age difference in general, there it's it's going to be some of the relationships we see are closer age-wise to siblings 
Uh, mm -hmm. Obi-Wan, I, I love, wants to see Anakin as a sibling, and Obi-Wan needs him to be a father. You got those great lines in Attack of the Clones. I like your closest thing to a father I'll ever have. Um, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. it, and, and I always read Anakin in the Clone Wars animated series as the older brother because he is teaching her, but he's also like they kind of get into naughty fun together and kind of mm -hmm. bend and break rules together. Mm -hmm. um, so there is, I, I think, a, a, you can read the relationship that way. I think this, because it was so, this whole series, this whole show was about the master and apprentice relationship. And you can absolutely read uh, Ahsoka and Sabine as, as sisters, um, but it is so much about this more, uh, uh, not not years-based, but relationship-based of, my role is to pass on everything I have to you. And then to me, that becomes really generational and really parental. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, we see that with Balin and Shin. He very much feels like a father figure who then abandons her. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so, so Ken, uh, <laughs> you, you think it's the Balin I, thoughts? Yeah. Yeah. No, I was okay, in, in rewatching. I was rewatching stuff this morning, and 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 again, there's uh, everything's open to interpretation. We put out in our Ahsoka overview episode last week of, of we think we all three kind of think Balin bad is there, and some folks in, in our comments were very nice and respectfully going, oh, I read it a little differently, which yeah. that's the power of Star Wars. Totally right. But there was watching the moment today when he's staring out, feeling something on Peridia going, hmm, she's got a, damn, things are just stories. And he had this moment of like, all right, you're done. Um, <laughs> <laughs> just, <laughs> <and he left. laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. Different yeah. episode. Of, we'll come back to it. <laughs> right. If you're the child of a divorced parent, you know, <laughs> <laughs> see, on the, see on the weekend kid i gotta go <laughs> it was, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, i got yeah. bowling tuesday night so I'll pick you up wednesday morning yeah, yeah. <laughs> your ambition is leading you to uh sleep over at somebody else's house daddy's got yeah, stuff yeah. to do yeah. Yeah. you're just like your mother <laughs> yeah 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 um so uh Anakin, uh, can he he makes yeah. the argument that the Jedi must be trained differently based on their circumstances? Uh, mm -hmm. Ahsoka is understandably wrestling with. I was raised as a child to be a soldier. Everything I've known is is war and death. Uh, mm -hmm. But Anakin seems to have no qualms about teaching Ahsoka to be a warrior because he kind of argues that's what's needed for the situation that we're in. Do you find yourself agreeing with Anakin, or how do you parse that with all the lessons of the Clone Wars? Here's where I went first. Is it was a reflection of the order at this time, and it reminds me that this is a situation Palpatine engineered for them. A a literal can't win. Uh, you're talking about the stuff with Balin of like, hey, you're fighting, you're violent. Uh, a lot of folks feel, and, and we we are a uh, you know uh, Joseph, a, a, a justice for the Jedi is close to your heart, and <laughs> and it's part of what we want here. And, and I, this came up again, and 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 you know, the young Ahsoka part of this, we, we can dive into more of that uh, later on, but it, it was powerful because, oh, that's right. This was a girl. This was a teenager. This was a almost preteen kid in war. That doesn't feel right. And so a lot of, I saw a lot of tweets of, yeah, I told you the Jedi are a messed up warrior, violent cult. And and I, I don't think any of that's true. I think there's just the circumstances we're in. So that's why I said earlier, there's a lot of what Anakin's saying that I think is probably uh, true from his perspective, true for the time, but you don't trust it because you know how much of that is Vader, how much of this is that I'm I'm kind of an intense young man and this was all leading me to that, you know? You lost a fight, he, he, trust me, you lost winning and losing, um, but you have still have a chance to live. Uh, I'm here to finish mm. your training for that point. And that's the lesson, live or die. And we might interpret that because of what we're seeing with the warrior stuff as it's, it's a, that's Vader saying that. I don't think, I think that's Anakin saying that mm -hmm. he had a choice to live or die. Uh, and he couldn't let go of, of what he thought one vision or future of, of Padme was. He couldn't let go of that. So he fought, he fought and, and, and he lost and, and he never lacked that conviction. Right. But, but that cost him everything. And, and I think the words, kind of have different meaning depending on how you're looking at it and it conveyed to the truth. But I start there that this was a reflection of the Jedi order at the time. They, they did slip and allow themselves to get into this situation engineered by the greatest evil of all time. <laughs> and, and that's, so you are a warrior and that was part of who you are and part of, part of the failure. Yeah. I mean, I, I know uh, different uh, fans have uh, different opinions. I have uh, all the respect for that. Uh, from, from my reading, I feel like the lesson of the Clone Wars is yes, the, Jedi should have found the strength to say no, yeah. you know, we'll guard hospitals or whatever, but we're not leading an army. Uh, but I think that they felt like Dooku is a Sith. This is our problem. I think there, it, it, there are great things in the Clone Wars animated series where they are 
at first they're just trying to mostly do defense and then like okay well we'll we'll help you take this one planet that's been invaded okay now mm -hmm. we're slipping and now we're actively invading planets so and they're trying to end the war quickly so i think they convince themselves that they need to do this and then it uh just mm -hmm. they they succumb to it they sink deeper and deeper into it uh so i i, I have justice for the jedi from the perspective of like i understand why they made the mistakes <laughs> uh, yeah they made mistakes though they're not inherently bad and that is the lesson it's that they made mistakes they had great intentions they made mistakes in them yeah. i think for me, what was interesting about this vision of Anakin talking about it of, yeah, Anakin, like all the Jedi, uh, and as the chosen one, maybe should have questioned the war more. But by the time it got started, mm -hmm. there were these clones that he came to see his brothers. There's this Padawan who is his responsibility. And we can't always all control all of the machinations of the world. And sometimes we just find ourselves in a situation and you need to adjust to it. I was really moved by the way he said, like, you must adjust to the times. I'm not even mm -hmm. telling you, this isn't a question of is the war right or wrong. We're mm -hmm. in the middle of a battle and we're being shot at. And the question right now is live or die. Uh, yeah. If you fight, you can save yourself. I'm trying to keep you alive. If you fight, you can keep more of these clones alive. I don't want to lose any of them. Maybe we shouldn't be in this situation, but mm -hmm. we are. I think I have a side of myself that is very pragmatic and mm -hmm. uh, and blunt. And I think I relate to that part of Anakin sometimes where, uh, you know, I've been in situations where people just want to talk about how we shouldn't be in this situation. And sometimes mm -hmm. I'm like, I agree, you are correct, but we are in it right bleeping <laughs> now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And these are the two <laughs> mother bleeping options in front of us. Mm -hmm. And I feel mm -hmm. like that's the part of his character that came out that isn't about like, he isn't like, war is great. Tap into your anger, Ahsoka. Yeah, He's saying, yeah. This is the reality now, and I I want you to be strong and safe, and to do that, you gotta fight. Mm -hmm. um, it, mm -hmm. it also just feels like an analogy for for actual life, not physically fighting, but just emotionally fighting for yourself. You have to fight to live. Uh, mm -hmm. Jennifer, how did you feel about how Anakin talked about uh, uh, training Ahsoka for for war and to be a warrior? Well, first of all, I liked that they used the word warrior, since that's what Obi-Wan says in A New Hope. He mm -hmm. said he, Anakin was a cunning warrior. That's a positive thing. And so mm -hmm. we can see here in this moment, he is training her to be a survivor. And I, well, we'll get into Ariana Greenblatt's performance, which is <laughs> fantastic. Yeah. But I really liked that. There's a lot of people that have not watched The Clone Wars. They have no idea about Ahsoka's backstory. Mm -hmm. So it kind of, I felt mm -hmm. like in a way, it was introducing people to the snips that we knew mm -hmm. at the beginning. This plucky, wide-eyed young girl who's just like, you know, optimistic, hopeful, right? And and I and I like that he's like, listen, you, you got to survive. And we see her over the course of the Clone Wars and now where she's ended up at the beginning of this series, the Ahsoka series, she has become a warrior and she has become a survivor because of that training and going through everything that she went through. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I really liked that. I felt it was very truthful to the mm -hmm. character for both of them. Yeah. I think it had some great rhythm of with uh, uh, lessons from uh, Last Jedi and in the Kenobi series as well of like it is understandable for uh, particularly middle aged Jedi <laughs> to mm -hmm. say, uh, is, is this just a cycle? Is it just endless fighting? I want to be done mm -hmm. with the fighting. And I feel like the lesson that Star Wars comes to again and again is um, you do have to to fight, to live, to survive, to help other people. Um, but you can choose how you go about fighting. And I think that's, yeah. you know, what Ahsoka ultimately does with the Ahsoka the White of like, I do need to keep fighting, but I can be more open. I can uh, be less negative. I can be less, well, now it's all ruined, so being messed it up, and I can be open to possibilities and be creative. Uh, yeah. yeah. Right. No, yeah. that's the great stuff. Yeah, because, you know, stopping or defeating Thrawn is, is, I'd say, still pretty important and still maybe has to be done, right? <laughs> but 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 now, like we said earlier, there, she's open to more of the bigger picture, different solutions. And, and there was something mm -hmm. powerful of me of the final bits of this sequence um, ending with her not striking him down or coming close to, to striking him down with her weapon. It's with his. Mm -hmm. And, and mm -hmm. it's a different, just, just the different how. The why is established. Why we have to fight. The how is something we always talk about because it's big in Star Wars constantly, constantly. Yeah, and it's very Jedi. She disarms him and removes the weapon. Yeah, and, you know she fought, and that's that's where she ended up. Um, mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. One more question, and then we're going to take a quick break. Uh, Ken talked about this a little bit, but Jennifer, uh, how did you feel about the ending of the entire show, uh, the series? Did ending on a vision of Four Spirit Anakin feel right for the end of this series? And, and what did seeing Anakin, do you think, do for Ahsoka in that moment? I loved it. It was such a beautiful moment visually and story-wise. It felt very religious, I will say, <laughs> right? <laughs> I mean, I can see like, you know, those Jesus uh, pictures that you see sometimes in yeah. people's homes, right? With this like light I'm coming behind yeah. Anakin. Uh, I'm so oh, used to the uh, Qui-Gon and Kenobi jokes of that yes. sort of like, uh, but yeah, we can add, add Anakin to the list. Yep. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting because in that performance and Anakin looks sad. There's a there's a flash of like almost sadness and I and I got worried at first. I'm like, oh no, he's sad. He's like miss he's wishing he could be there like in person. <laughs> mm -hmm. I IRL. Um but then, <laughs> but then his face quickly changes and this smile and not like a cheesy big smile like I did my job. It's just a slight smile and it's just so poignant and beautiful. And it just, it's the perfect stamp on this series. I mean, I don't know if we're going to get, are we going to get in a, a series to a season Not two? Not announced yet. Not announced yet. But I don't know. I mean, it's kind of think. a, it's a great ending though. It's just a great ending to this, to this chapter. I don't, I just, I loved it. Yeah. Hmm. I, I felt hmm. like it was a great ending uh, to, I feel like in terms of the big plot of Star Wars, it 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 got Ahsoka back to this other galaxy. It set Ahsoka and Sabine up for adventures. Uh, set Thrawn and the Night Sisters up. So there was a lot of like a very and next time on Star Wars, whenever that's going to happen mm -hmm. in terms of plot. But I feel like the emotional arc uh, for Sabine and Ahsoka was was resolved. And mm -hmm. for Ahsoka in particular, it was I can't get past. I've never made peace with what happened to Anakin. Uh, I faced him. I fought him. Uh, I I assume she heard from Luke and or Leia what mm -hmm. happened to him that he made a better choice in the end. But she needed to work through that. And I feel like this is just totally like putting a button on the trauma and the fear that she would be too much like him. Um, and this whole uh, I think the whole show is about I about her in many ways wanting to be a good uh, mentor, parent, Jedi master to Sabine. And she can't do that unless she puts away her baggage with her uh, Jedi Master uh, parent. And I feel like this is so like, yep, my baggage is is put away. And what I love about uh, the way he looks at her, uh, it's almost like watching Anakin Skywalker, uh, uh, you know, watch his uh, kid drive off to college of like, <laughs> you're going to go live in a dorm, but I know you got this. And yeah. I'm a force phone call away, buddy. You know, enjoy. Yeah. yeah, it's it's bittersweet, but it's also like you totally got this. It is. She talks about letting go. Uh, he obviously struggled in IRL <laughs> with mm -hmm. letting go. And it yeah. was such a beautiful moment of let it go. Let let the worries about me go. I'm here if you need me, but but you don't need me. You're full and complete. Mm. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I was going to make a Wonder Years joke of suddenly Joe Cocker starts singing. Of, what would you do? This happens. But you made me think of, <laughs> of, of uh, end of season five of Clone Wars. This is the exact opposite of that. There's this great mm -hmm. peace now with Anakin that he that he has achieved in this section uh, of his journey and versus the one that he stands by. Right. He, 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 so he even talks about that. I made I, I made big decisions and Anakin stood by me. Um, mm -hmm. And at the end of season five of Clone Wars, he does away. But he's. You know, he's got his own conflicts going on and he's uh, not too far away from making a big decision himself. Um, and, and this moment, it was a wonderfully odd choice to end the series with Anakin at first for me of that being the mm -hmm. final shot. I had this kind of like, oh, well, OK, but it does make a lot of sense. And in a, in a series that has a lot of, I think, loose threads, you describe it well as next time on Star Wars. And I think we all hope we get there, whether it's the movie or ongoing series or whatever. But this is you're right. The Sabine. Ahsoka stuff does come to a nice close and he has a large part of that. And it's just nice. It's an, it's return the Jedi vibes, right? It's, it's uh, him, him having this, this realization and dare I say some sort of peace for him, whether or not he fully needed that. I don't know. Uh, force ghost Anakin, but Jen, you're right. Like, like there's a, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I feel good now. I feel good about mm -hmm. this. Yeah. Yeah. I think, uh, I think, more a uh, the the convoy being there mm -hmm. um, assists with this as well, but I think there is also just an element of 
you're on the right path. You know, mm-hmm. keep going, kid. Yeah. Yeah. You know, enjoy college. <laughs> I don't know, it's college. Uh, yeah. Any other thoughts on this uh, before we do our recommendation? What one of the thoughts? I, I maybe it's a question. Is is because it is is it's a rather complete moment for for Anakin, and I, I would absolutely love to see Hayden. And there's many ways to to do it again, right? And going back, you can do different parts of the journey and timeline. Um, but in terms of, I had this peaceful, slightly fearful realization, but a peaceful realization that this could be the last time we need to see them together again. Yeah. In any mm-hmm. way, shape, or form. There came to it. It came to a nice end, which was. Um, was uh, I'll take that if that's if that's if that's the the actual reality of it. Yeah, I feel like this thread of her feeling afraid of of her p- potential for violence yeah. is completed. Uh, obviously, there's a lot more storytelling for Ahsoka, and I can see her being in a place of conflict and in, in reaching yeah. out to him. But this felt like a resolution of the relationship. Um, yes, yes. Like I think the way Luke appears to Ray in Rise of Skywalker is not about them resolving their relationship. It, 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 that's really just like, you're having a hard time and you, and you need someone to chat with. So I'm around, yeah. you know? So I think she still might phone a friend, <laughs> mm-hmm, <laughs> but mm-hmm. in terms of their relationship, it was a nice button. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, all right, uh, shall we uh, do our recommendation and take a quick break? Yeah, absolutely. Our Force Center recommends us an audiobook we think you should try out on us. And Joseph, what do we have today? Uh, we are still recommending Path of Deceit by Justina Ireland and Tessa Grattan. It is the first book in phase two of The High Republic. Uh, I read it recently and really enjoyed it, so wanted to encourage people to check it out. So if you're like us, you need to start phase two finally and dive in. Download your free audiobook today by go to audibletrial.com slash center. Again, that's audibletrial.com slash center for your free audiobook. All right, quick break. We'll be back with more Anakin Skywalker in the Ahsoka series. Be right back here in Force Center. All right, we are back. We're having a lot of fun diving deep into the spirit of Anakin Skywalker and all those boots and all those lightsaber fights, <laughs> uh, fighting that was uh, going on there. Joseph, it's been a lot of fun, but we're gonna we're gonna go swing through literally with some lightsabers here. That is right. We talked about the depth, and I'm sure we'll keep talking about uh, the depth and ideas. But there is also just a lot of hey, if you're a Star Wars fan, X, Y, and Z was really cool to see with Anakin. So we're gonna talk about some of that. Mm-hmm. Uh, lots of fans were extremely thrilled by Hayden's great action moves. Um, Ken, were there any particular beats of the fight you enjoyed uh, seeing Anakin swing that lightsaber? Uh, there was uh, some great, what I would describe as big, wild, powerful Vader swings, mm-hmm. right? Uh, uh, this is still clearly um, Anakin fighting. This is uh, Revenge of the Sith Anakin, Clone Wars Anakin, but I, I like when some of Vader emerges. Um, you know, obviously his style changes a little bit a little more clunky around him, you know, freedom mm-hmm. of movement is not there as much. <laughs> I know there's just some there. And, and, and Hayden is, it's really good at this fighting. He, he, he could probably, there's a, there's a place up the street in Burbank. He might, you know, teach some people how to do broadswords and stuff. He's really good at this. And it was fun to see that just as a fan level to have him get back. And, and again, this was in the Kenobi series too. We saw, so as well, and those two fighting together is great. But, but I think him and Rosario, um, you could just tell it, 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 it had the, that cool Star Wars vibe. And I just, I was watching that this morning, just a couple of big moments where he's just, rah, he's hacking down like Vader. I love that. Yeah. There's some big hacks. Uh, Jennifer, you have any particular fight moments that you enjoy? At the beginning of the episode, I was like, oh my gosh, she's really not holding back. Like at all. I was, mm-hmm. I was worried and kudos to, to Rosario Dawson for being able to go right back. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, you can tell that he has been training and she's been training uh, for him, obviously, since uh, Kenobi It's just, it's, and I guess that's another reason why it was so exciting to see Hayden back is like, this mm-hmm. is Anakin in his prime. This yeah. is seeing him at his fullest potential. And Hayden is, is making that happen. I mean, a, a lot of actors, you know, they're maybe they're they're living the life, right? <laughs> We're just <laughs> Netflix and chill. And so it takes a lot to be in fighting shape. And he has really, he's done an amazing job. I just, I loved it. Yeah, I could go back and watch that sequence over and over again because it's just yeah. it's perfect Star Wars. He is very Netflix and fight, not Netflix and chill for sure. Yeah. Yes. Um, and it's fun to see. It's, I, I spent the night after that episode just scrolling through hundreds, thousands of social media posts, posts screaming for the goat, you know, like uh-huh, particularly uh-huh. people who grew up with the prequels and didn't have any, right. any negative baggage and just appreciated how great his fighting is, particularly in uh, Revenge of the Sith all throughout, mm-hmm. but really gets to show his chops in Revenge of the Sith. Um, yeah. There are a couple, couple, fun moves um he did it a couple time 
I love these sort of these you were describing as hacks, but there's this very blunt, like he brings a saber forward and then almost with his shoulder, just like mm -hmm. with the force of his uh, body sort of pushes her back. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. such a great, just like, yeah, this is about where the blade is, but it's almost more just totally about like, this is the energy of who I am as a person coming at you. Uh, yeah. And it wasn't fancy. It's just boom, shoulders, boom, somebody flies back. That was real cool. Mm -hmm. um, everybody loved the spinning behind the back uh, blade yeah. move uh, mm -hmm. that he did. There's a moment that he's approaching her as Vader, and it, it isn't uh, it isn't pulled back too far, uh, so, so it's not in, incredibly obvious. But he's spinning the red blade, mm -hmm. which is uh, you've never seen him do the mm -hmm. like I'm just warming up, uh, you know, with the red blade. So that was yeah. cool. And then uh, final thing for me, um, I always really like it when the camera just really pulls back and just shows you the two people doing the choreography yes. and in that final phrase where he is you know vader uh, and is coming at her there's a great shot uh that's pulled way back in total profile and they're both being doing kind of big swinging swoops which to me was like really reminiscent of some of the choreography and some of the shots of vader versus luke in mm -hmm. return of the jedi which i know is one of your mm -hmm. favorites ken it just mm -hmm. didn't really evoke that uh did, did you get yeah. that vibe ken I absolutely did. Look, the, it, it's got to look and feel a certain way, even though you got to push new boundaries. And that felt like felt like Star Wars. And again, you know, to be honest, on my journey with the series, I, I wasn't feeling stuff as much as other people, including the end of episode four, because I think I had a little bit of like, yeah, 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 we, we knew he was here. I'm I'm grumpy. And, and this is the this is the first episode where I kind of leaned a little forward. And, and it's not just that it felt like the Star Wars I was familiar with. It just was, it was, uh, you know, it was big, a big sweeping epic moment. And, and that worked for me. And that's, uh, that's what I needed to maybe connect a little bit more. That's my yeah. journey. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think, uh, you know, we're talking about which parts of the lightsaber fights were cool, but I think uh, I always love it when lightsaber fights are uh, both, wow, that looked cool, but then it's visually meaningful. And I think that's Perfect. maybe why I'm gravitating Perfect. toward those moments where mm -hmm, it just mm -hmm. feels like, I am coming at you just like life, just like Balin, just like your trauma. I'm coming at you and you got to respond to it. And how are you yeah. choose to respond? So you, you yeah. get both the cool and yeah. the depth. Um, yeah. uh, any particular lines or exchanges from Anakin that you enjoyed, Jennifer? Was there anything that was just like, that's a fun line, that's a cool line, or that's a deep, meaningful line? What grabbed you? There were so many, but I really loved in the first uh, flashback sequence where Ahsoka says, this is the Clone Wars. And then Anakin, he like kind of chuckles and says, yeah, no kidding. It just was a <laughs> side of Anakin in live action that I was like, oh, I love it. Like he just is, he's, there's that older brother, right? There's that mm -hmm. like relaxed, confident um, Anakin that we, that we know is there. And um yeah, I just, I loved that. That was a fun moment. There were just so many moments like that where he just felt like he was so relaxed, even in the mm -hmm. midst of everything that's going on. So, um, yeah. yeah. And just script wise, you know, it, it, to me, it's not a huge criticism of the prequels. I think it's a reality script wise. He only gets to be playful so much, you know, right. there, there are great moments in Attack of the Clones in Revenge of the Sith where he's, he's uh, playful. And I love those moments, but Clone Wars gave us so many of those moments Exactly. That this, I think, is the moment where he's just like, ah, great. I get to really sink my teeth into this is his vibe then. You know, mm -hmm. it's great. I, I, I would have loved it. You know, th it was a great exposition moment. You need to kind of explain this is the Clone Wars. But if Dan could have turned, turned around and been like, oh, I didn't watch Star Wars animation. I don't know. Is it good? <laughs> what, what is it? Is it good? Uh, I'm really nerdy out. Like, these are phase two or phase one troopers, actually. So, <laughs> yeah. cool. uh, phase one. Uh yeah, um, I really, I really liked, and then I want to pitch to you, Ken. Uh, yeah, the one is never too old to learn. Snips uh, mm. felt like um, you know it's, it's a great boilerplate line setting up what's going on, um, but it also felt like him talking about himself. Like there's a couple different lines that have some weight of because we can connect that to his journey. Some some pretty explicitly, but the one is never too old to learn. Snips was one you like. You see a flash of <laughs> middle aged Kenobi, <laughs> and yeah. you know older Luke, and like yep that's that's one of the life lessons of star wars is one mm -hmm. is never too old to learn but the one is mm -hmm. never too old to learn also just felt like uh i learned at the very end of my life yes i mm -hmm. was not i was not yep. too yep. old to learn what really matters to me and that that there's still well that there's still a path back because mm -hmm. he's so convinced like kenobi you once thought as you did there's no path for me yeah i'm done yeah. Mm -hmm. and to learn i learned at the very end of my life that right. there's a path back uh, and you're giving yourself all this pressure uh, Ahsoka that you're 
you're middle-aged, you've been around the block, you should know everything. Like, it's fine. We're always learning. Yeah, I love that you said that. Uh, and again, the, 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 this entire episode and anything with Anakin in the series is, is open to your own personal interpretations. We'll be clear about that to anyone listening or watching. But I, I, I goes back to what you said about that line of, of this, is this what this is about? Um, Anakin's already been on that journey. He, he doesn't need to work it out. He mm-hmm. he he's already been on it. He he had the mask taken off as Luke cried over him, and mm-hmm. and so I think that's f- feeds back into that line right there of like yeah yeah yeah. I, trust me, it's never too late to learn. Uh, yeah, you know, never you're never too old. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, there are a couple more uh, that I wanted to touch on, but what are some of yours, Ken? Uh, the, I love the line. I haven't taught you everything yet. Uh, kind of uh, mm. to the theme of why he's back and and why she needs him back. Uh, this was probably on your list as well, but it was very popular around the world. And it was, I won't fight you. I've heard that before. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it was a great way to to call back to the Return of the Jedi moments with Luke and his son. Yeah, it, yeah, it's a, it's a cool. You know, I don't I don't think it, it is at all a, a member barrier. Do you recognize that at mm-hmm. all? Thing I think it really is orienting us to whatever you believe this this vision of Anakin is, it's a vision of Anakin who's lived his whole life. Who knows it, yeah. Yeah, who knows what he's been through. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, we've talked plenty about, is that what this is about? But I, I also just like it as a, it is like him saying, uh, I, I cannot get through to her unless I let her face Vader, which means I kind of need to let the disease that yeah. hate seep in. But it is also just incredibly funny with the, understatement with the cockiness mm. of it you know um mm. just, just say oh is that what you're hung up on the 25 years or so of <laughs> yeah. just genocidal malice and destruction is that yeah. what this is about yeah 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 so, yeah pretty great <laughs> uh final one for me is the uh the um incorrect kind of head, head tilted mm. invader um mm-hmm. they're, they're at that sense, at that point you know they're putting a little bit of metallic effect on his voice but mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. Hayden over the years has talked about how he really tried to 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 have lots of emotion as Anakin, but also kind of keep a little bit of this sort of flat matter of fact tone mm-hmm. that will lead to Vader. Um, and that would that line is just like, oh, yes, I totally see that Anakin and Vader speak mm-hmm. exactly the same. That was a perfect, perfect in between of Anakin and Vader. Mm-hmm. Just the incorrect. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I love yeah, that one. I like that. Uh, any other lines before we move on? No, good stuff for me. Excellent. Uh, so we've talked about it a little bit, but I want to dive in deeper on the just lore side of things. Uh, we get the thrill of seeing the Clone Wars era in live action, seeing uh, Anakin interact with young Ahsoka during the Battle of Ryloth in the Siege of Mandalore. Uh, we see Helmet on, live action Rex, uh, young Ahsoka, mm. obviously. Uh, Jennifer, what was the most interesting or thrilling part of just seeing all of that uh, formerly animated, now live action Clone Wars stuff? I thought it was really well done by Dave Filoni. It was very deftly done, right? So he, you know, some might say, oh, well, Anakin's just going to be a cameo. He could just be a cameo. No, he made him the whole meat of the episode, right? (laughs) That's one thing. That's a big, that's kind of like a big risk, but it's also something that fans want to see. But then at the same time, he gives us like a Rex cameo. Now, you know, Rex doesn't take off his helmet. It's not a big moment. It's just like, oh, that makes sense that Rex would be there. It, okay, great, right? I loved that. Um, I, I like that they had the battle in fog. They don't need to show us specifically what is going on because it keeps us focused on the story, on the characters, obviously, as we've talked about, maybe like budget-wise, <laughs> they couldn't uh, go there, yeah, yeah. right? But yeah. it works, it works. And then lastly, I'll say, young Ahsoka, Ariana Greenblatt. Holy, this this young actress is so phenomenal. She embodies the spirit. Her performance is so believable and so real. She looks like young Ahsoka and she sounds like Ashley Eckstein. I was like, how, whoever found, whatever casting director, whoever found this person, <laughs> bravo. Because I just was like, I want to see more of her. Uh, I really do. Um, I hope we'll get to see more of her because she was so good. So good. Yeah. And you know what, Jen, she killed it in Barbie playing what I'm calling the young Jen Landa role. <laughs> and then oh, God, she's, I need to watch that movie. Yeah. She's had yeah. quite a year. <laughs> it, it, quite it, a was, year. it was, yeah. it was, it was her summer. Yeah. Between oh. Barbie yeah. and this appearance is Ahsoka. Really, really uh, amazing yeah. stuff. 
yeah. yeah. Uh, I really agree with a ton of stuff you're saying. I know that it is the limitations of the volume up to mm -hmm. a point, but I also it also felt artistically entirely correct. I loved that it was misty and hazy and dreamlike, and it, it felt like that's what Ahsoka is experiencing. But it also feels like that's what war really looks like. Uh, you know, misty and hazy, and you can only see the immediate in front of you while also trying to understand the big picture of what is going on around you. And I really enjoyed seeing it that way because I think for me, that's where the volume is at its best. Uh, I, mm -hmm. I think the volume looks fantastic for the Kenobi Vader fight in, in the Kenobi series um, because it looks misty and dreamlike in like a 70s fantasy book mm -hmm. <laughs> come to live action. And I, I thought that both of these battlefields look that way too. And I know mm -hmm. uh, some for some people it's they just see the limit of the budget but artistically it looked it looked beautiful to me um it was really really fun to see anakin in the armor just to see that clone wars armor with the big jedi insignia on the shoulder in live action with the different haircut that was really cool uh i agree with you that the the performance of young ahsoka was great she sounded like ashley Eckstein. she sounded like rosario dawson mm -hmm. she sounded like a wide-eyed kid and she also sounded like uh 35 40 year old woman in the body of mm -hmm. a 15 year old like it, it, yes. it, it she also did the sort of freaky friday i'm older than what i look like yeah uh, yeah, yeah you right. know That's acting hard. really well it's really mm -hmm. hard but i think the biggest impact of all of it for me was um ahsoka is injured by being a child warrior balin is haunted by being uh a, a, not mm -hmm. a child warrior but a, a young man yeah. warrior um seeing it in live action i've watched the clone wars a, a million times that i've been moved by it but seeing an actual young woman mm -hmm. really drove home the trauma of i was raised here in a misty hell battlefield that's where i grew up mm -hmm. it really drove mm -hmm. it home seeing it in live action in a different way i think it's intellectually very clear in the clone wars animated series but it was emotional here and i felt it in a different way Mm -hmm. Ken, what was uh, you, what do you feel about that? And, and uh, anything else you loved in the in the Clone Wars live action bonanza? Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. In the reaction to the internet, and a lot of people focusing on that, there was a little bit of it, you know. And I mean, it's a good way of like, oh, I never really thought about it in those terms. Yeah, that was a kid out on the, and she wasn't the only one. And 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 again, that I know it turned a little bit into a negative take on the on the on the order, but that's where they were at this time. So this whole sequence, um, when it first happens, when one of the clones, you know, walks by, you're like, oh, okay, they're doing it, they're doing it, and and there's a, a surface level fun for me of just like being prequelists around here and, and someone who came around on those films. And it's just, I don't know, there's, there's um, just like a justification that that was all real, that that whole sequence, uh, that whole series of films and the Clone Wars and the mechs and the walkers and the armor and everything we, mm -hmm. we loved there. It's, it's very real and it's part of the story. And, and uh, you know, it's big. It's obviously important to Dave and his uh, Star Wars journey and his heart. Um, so it was, wasn't just a, a simple little thing for me it was a big it was a big fun thing to see it on there and and to point and go yeah those are the rock walkers that's this fight oh my god they're doing siege of mm -hmm. mandalore uh, that's some surface level fun now uh, the meaning of it was powerful yeah, ariana greenblatt was in my notes too as well i, I thought she did some of the finest uh, work in the series and the stuff here in the time she had and yeah jen i had a weird thought this morning rewatching it i was like i'm not saying i want to reboot the clone wars animated series as a live action series but i wouldn't be opposed to something with it like it was it was it was it was very fun to watch. Yeah, a few specials would be great. I would yeah. I would not I would not object to that. That would be amazing. <sighs> yeah. yeah. Um yeah, when she turns uh and is like, yes, you're more Anakin, more powerful, mm -hmm. more it's just it's, it's great. 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 Anyway, mm -hmm. uh so Anakin also pops up. I want to be sure to address this in the form of a hollow lesson for Ahsoka that she is uh training to doing her forms, mm -hmm. uh during which she name checks Asajj Ventress. And Ahsoka reveals he made 20 or more of these training videos. Uh, Jen, what, what was valuable or interesting to you about this uh, sort of Anakin appearance? I thought that it was really insightful to Ahsoka and how she still relies on him. She still needs that, that guidance. And that's really where it does feel like it is more of a parental child relationship. Mm -hmm. Like she, she needs her dad. Right. And mm -hmm. it's not that she, it's just that he, he encourages her, he motivates her. And as Yang says, you know, it was very thoughtful of him 
to do these these hollow messages for her. And, you know, and she's like, he was a good master. And it's just like hammering that home again. You know, yeah, yeah, we know what happened to him. Yes, he's Darth Vader, but he was also this great, for those of you who may not have watched the Clone Wars anime series, he he was a great, a great man, a great guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Said Annie. And a good friend. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To go back to your Obi-Wan quotes you're talking about. Yeah. I really, I think it, it's, it, it gets to the tragedy of Anakin Skywalker that he, he didn't yes. have to make the bad choice that he did mm. to, to can let himself be consumed mm -hmm. with fear and manipulated by Palpatine. Mm -hmm. Because this, the, the training video shows this heartbreaking ability to let go, which is what ultimately damns him with his, his choice, mm -hmm. his fear of, of what it will do to me if, if I can't bear the pain of, Padme dying. Um, it, it, his his dialogue. You know, I won't always be there to look out for you. If we get separated or something happens, you, you know, you need to be able to make it on your own. Don't be afraid. Just remember what I taught you and trust your instincts. I know you can do this, Ahsoka. Hmm. It's all like it, it's got this great in the moment. Like this is what she needs to hear. She goes to face this new galaxy and face Thrawn and all these choices. Uh, but for him to be able to say that back then, of like, I I love this girl she is like mm. my little sister like my daughter uh, compassion is everything to him his fear of mm. loss is huge and for him to be able to record that and be on the right path and say i know my role is to give you everything i can and then trust that you got this you know it this one felt to me like a, a like a dad making a video for for a kid to drive a stick shift of like <laughs> i don't want to let you drive off in the car alone but i've told you about riding the clutch and now i trust Mm -hmm. that you've got it and I back away. It, mm -hmm. it was it was really uh, heartwarming and a little heartbreaking. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good way to look at it. I thought episode five was this very powerful emotional uh, sequence that ended with an ellipses. And and, mm -hmm. and and this was this was the the the, the punctuation, the period and the end of, mm -hmm. the, of the of the sentence. This was her, you know, it seems almost direct. He was a good master. We, yeah, she, she, she just went through all that. And, but, but it goes to what you're saying of, if he made over 20 of these, this was his last one. We don't know exactly on the timeline, you mm -hmm. know, is we can go by hair and armor. We might know exactly kind of where it is, but it just, he was, this was in his soul while he was still wrestling with what he was wrestling with while he was still fighting a war and, and leading when, when he needed to. So this was part of, of who he was. This was that well-rounded, Anakin that she can be and that she still has uh, those choices in front of her. And, and I th agree with you. It's, it's sad. This was the last one. We all know what that means. We all know where it went and, and he lost himself, but it, along the way he was very much um, who he needed to be and, 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 and aware of who he needed to be and wanted to be particularly towards yeah. uh, characters like her. And again, just fun connecting the Clone Wars here in Asajj Ventress. Yeah, that's pretty cool. You pointed the screen like Leo, and it works. It it it, it is huge. It is you know a, yeah. a validation of all the time we spent with that. But but Asajj in particular, who is a character that I think a lot of people love. I know we love mm -hmm. really hearing mm -hmm. her. Her name checked was in, in some ways even bigger than seeing Rex to me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Her name checked in in live action. I saw some yeah. jokes on on social media, some darker jokes of the uh, security footage of the uh, Anakin's assault on the Jedi Temple, saying. He made mm. one more video. <laughs> so, oh, jeez. Oh, no. Uh, heartbreaking, heartbreaking, but funny. Uh, I also like the, the exact question of, mm. and it's not a pedantic, I need to know the answer. It's fun to think about. It's a fun thing to not know. where. Mm. How much work did she do to get all these? Because she's got a little box of them. Right? Yeah, yeah, like yeah. She's, yeah. She's collected them all. You know, did she send for her belongings? Did she have... <laughs> at some yeah. point like could you please oh, send all the few belongings in my uh, little jedi room could you please send it to the martez sisters you know or did she collect these post fall you know mm. yeah. some imperial I'm like, I'm like yeah, I'm almost wondering is there, that, that time during Clone Wars season seven that's kind of running alongside Revenge of the Sith. It was there a moment we just haven't seen where she slips down. The, oh, they didn't empty my room out yet. Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, maybe you know when because Anakin, there's a big thing of Anakin, you know, uh, making her blades better, you know, yeah, and and making them the same color as his. Uh, maybe yeah. he's also like in this box of videos. Don't forget <laughs> the how to drive a stick shift video I made you. <laughs> I put Pink Floyd's The Wall LP in here. <laughs> Listen to it at, at night with the lights down low. <laughs> uh, oh I love gosh. it. I yeah. absolutely love that. Um, it, we're, we're 
wrapping up our conversation here about the spirit of Anakin Skywalker in the Ahsoka show. Um, if there are many other training videos, uh, Jen, what other Anakin training videos uh, do you want to see? Uh, how to leap from tall places, dealing with your anger, stretching food rations. What kind of videos do you want to see from Anakin? I'm going to say something really controversial because I am an actor and obviously we're fighting against AI and this actually has nothing to do with this series, but how cool would it be if you could get an AI of Hayden as Anakin, like giving you motivational videos, right? Like they have Kendall <laughs> Jenner and like Paris Hilton doing these AI generated things where they talk to you, but yeah. I would pay a subscription to have Anakin. Like when I wake up in the morning, drinking my coffee, like you can do this, Jen, <laughs> get out there. You got this kid. Like, Oh my gosh. Like I, I want that to be the future. That's yeah. the future that Star Wars fans want, or at least me. <laughs> That's beautiful. And trust your instincts. Also, yeah. your your fly is down. Oh, thanks. Thanks. <laughs> Getting me ready for the mm -hmm. day. Uh, mm -hmm. The the jokey video I want is, uh, what does your robe color as a Jedi say about you? Um, because it's one of the things that I love just sort of accepting as fantasy. But like, mm -hmm. you know, the the on the noseness of, you know, young Anakin being like, should we be worried that the Chosen One's really into dark? leather is that you know <laughs> and, and then that connection to like ahsoka goes through this and emerges ahsoka the white and like okay maybe it's a little yeah. bit off white uh, yeah. but but there is a visual robe change that yeah. is uh significant going on so that would be fun if he was like a lot of different jedi have different thoughts about what your robes say about you so yeah mm. ken how about like you what, uh, what videos do you want to see I want an Anakin uh, banter on the battlefield lesson. Like, when <laughs> when's it well timed? What line is it? What what do you say to get Obi Wan's goat? What do you say to to secretly make Yoda laugh, where he just kind of chuckles under his breath? How do you anger Mace Windu, Caddy Mundy? Uh, yeah, I, I think uh, the lessons of wartime banter with Anakin Skywalker, yeah. like a little comedy class. Here's how to avoid a uh, Quinlan Voss in the halls. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. That's definitely an older brother thing, right? Here's how yeah, you yeah. mess with everyone. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, Plo Koon's water, hand in water yeah. while he's sleeping, all the great stuff. Yeah, all the great stuff. Uh, <laughs> battlefield banter is great. Here, here's a final uh, fun question. Um, mm. If Mace Windu in the Jedi Council could see this version of complete, unified, well rounded Anakin, do you think they would finally grant him the rank of master, Ken? I, I think if you're if you're thrown to the council wide, I yeah, I I think there'd be a few votes for yes. Like ah, oh, we had him pegged wrong, or this is what we knew was always there. And and look, and and especially if they have some hindsight of of seeing what happens and the importance of of, of Luke and Ahsoka and the story going forward, I think they would have. I think Mace would have been like. Perhaps you should have uh, shown this at a s earlier time. I'm, good. I'm, voting, I'm voting no. Or Mace might vote present. He'll just be like present. Present. Yeah. Present. That's mm -hmm. great. Uh, I feel like uh, Mace would have to give it to him. Um, mm -hmm. But I don't think he can mm -hmm. do it without a long sigh. Yes. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, it's a jokey question, but it is uh, it is nice to imagine that like he made it. He finally made it. Uh, yeah. Jennifer, how about you? Do you think they would grant him the rank of master that they denied him in Revenge I, of the Sith? Yeah, I think that they would. And I think I'm approaching it more like an after school special where I could see this moment where he's like, well, ki well, kid, you know, I'm sorry for not for no, obviously he wouldn't talk like this, but uh, mm. I'm sorry for not believing in you. But thankfully, you had a master who did with his hand <laughs> on his shoulder, right? <laughs> but I don't, I don't think he would actually be that. I don't think he would apologize. Oh, really? Relaxed Mace Windu sounds terrifying. Terrifying, right? Like, like, right. Seeing, like when you're a kid and you'd see your 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 very stern parent uh, or not parent, like teacher at like a grocery store, or a, like, oh yeah. Yeah, no. Yeah, it's scary. Scary to imagine. Yeah, relax, Mace. Uh, I, do you like? I like imagining though that in, in in keeping with what happened with Ahsoka at the end of season five, where everyone like you know, Kiati Mundi is like, ah, all right, you know, this turns out this was your test all along, and Anakin's like, you know what? Now I don't want it. I don't need it. <laughs> You passed yeah, the test. That is actually the most important thing. Is Anakin is like, yeah, I, I'm, I, that that was my bad. I should not have got so upset about that. That was uh, not a big deal. Not a big deal. That's yeah. not what matters. That's not mm -hmm. what matters. Uh, mm -hmm. Any final thoughts on the spirit of Anakin Skywalker, Ken? 
Uh, for me, this was part of uh, yeah, parts uh, uh, of my. Uh, uh, excuse me, I'm, I'm stumbling. Uh, it was uh, the favorite part of my show, of the show for me, uh, mm-hmm. uh, in a lot of ways. Uh, like I said, I've, I've had a different journey with the show, and there's so many wonderful things. So much love and passion went into making it. Uh, that I know, and and this was both not just from the filmmakers, but the, the behind the scenes folks and the actors, and 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 uh, this was the sequence where I think it all came together in a wonderful way. And 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 like I said, all jokes aside, I don't mean this is an insult to the show or anything. Like this is probably an episode I'll I'll rewatch where I'm just like, you know what, I'm just gonna watch episode five. I don't need to watch one through eight. I'm gonna go to five. Uh, and it worked for me in a lot of ways because Anakin is so is so powerful and key to the story of Star Wars. And to in, in 2023, go back and and still find a different way to analyze him and 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 to shine certain lights on him and continue the lesson for us fans over Anakin's journey. I, I, I think that's pretty valuable. Yeah, no, I, I, I really agree. I think uh, this was uh, a, a favorite uh, episode for me and we've been talking about the Anakin part of it, but I really do enjoy the entire episode. I love what's going on uh, mm-hmm. with Jason, who Yang has some great moments in it. Yeah. And uh, it, this episode could have just been, Ahsoka kind of learns the lesson and then she benefits from the lesson next episode. But I, it felt very complete as an episode to see her emerge and say, oh, maybe I don't need to just be angry and upset that Sabine made a different choice. Mm. Maybe there's a possibility. And that thought of reaching out to the Purgles and and doing something daring and weird. And there's that, you know, great line with Hu Yang of like, uh, you know, we don't know if this is going to work. It's like, well, it's better than doing nothing. Is like, Mm. that's to me, that's the live lesson that came home. So, you know, that's part of what made the episode so powerful. And then just looking at Anakin is a central character in star wars it's just a gift it, it's just it's fun and meaningful it's fun to watch him uh play a, a fully formed anakin play all these aspects of anakin but it's also what i come to star wars for most the uh the depth and the meaning and how i can maybe apply that to my life mm-hmm. and trying to apply the like don't be so quick to think of one trait as just negative think of it yeah. as a truth of who you are how are you going to deploy that trait is it going to be destructively or like Anakin does in this episode constructively everything he does is to be there for Ahsoka and it's really beautiful uh any final thoughts from you Jennifer from a fan perspective if I cannot imagine years ago when I was watching the Clone Wars animated series thinking that we would see Hayden Christensen back on screen as Anakin and we'd be getting Ahsoka in live action like that just was not really uh, something that I thought would ever, we would ever get. So seeing them and, and I, I must admit when Rosario Dawson was first cast, I love her, but I had such a connection to Ashley Eckstein. I was like, mm-hmm. how is this going to work? Right. And, and Rosario Dawson did an incredible job. And in this episode specifically, the, the connection that these two have Hayden and Rosario, it, it feels so real. It's so truthful to these characters. They did such a beautiful job. The script is like perfect. And like you're saying, Ken, I could watch this over and over again. It's just such a beautiful moment in Star Wars that I just want, I want to take off the shelf and look at it and enjoy it and just put it back, right? It's something that <laughs> I, I'm going to be like uh, like uh, Ahsoka <laughs> with a hollow video, right? Hollow this videos. is going to be my hollow video. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes. So hopefully we can get all the Anakin videos that we can all watch <laughs> to get <laughs> right. ready for the day. Well, that is it. That is our look at the spirit of Anakin Skywalker. Ken, where can people find us? You can find us on Twitter and threads at Force Center Pod on Facebook page. Our Facebook page is Force Center Podcast. We're on Instagram youtube as well subscribe over there we got a uh, live show coming this month and uh you can yes see our faces if you want but we also really appreciate those listening on the podcast you can find the podcast on a lot of spots including iHeartRadio, apple Podcasts, google Podcasts, and more merch available at tpublic.com slash user slash force center and you can support us directly at patreon.com slash force center uh you can follow me at ken knapsack go to my website ken for more it's the holiday season i'm selling personalized copies of my book why we love star wars directly from my store there uh you can go there and find that out uh, as well as the other things i do uh jen uh where can i find and follow you you can find me on tiktok at jennifer landa 11 i have to resist saying twitter because it's no longer twitter it's x i'm also there at jennifer landa youtube instagram at jennifer landa 
That's right. Joseph, you had a lot of fun this past weekend uh, out in Vegas. Any more coming up? Or are you just uh, online for the rest of the winter season? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm only going to exist on the internet. Uh, no, I got I got some travels coming up. Uh, uh, a couple of shows uh, that I will remember uh, to write down the details mm -hmm. to tell people about. Uh, but for now, you can uh, find me on all the social media at Joseph Scrimshaw. Uh, if you can get an invite code to Blue Sky, I'm having a lot of fun over there in particular. Uh, if you would like to help me make uh, more short films like the uh, Nightmare Adorable that Ken was in and has been playing at festivals. It was in Vegas this weekend. Uh, I could uh, definitely use some more funds for my production company to make those films. In a way you can help is by uh, buying anything from my Bandcamp store. In particular, I have a holiday album, uh, a holiday comedy album I made a few years back called A Very Holiday Thing. So if that sounds like fun for you for this season, it would help me out a ton. That is on Bandcamp. Just go to Bandcamp.com and search for Joseph Scrimshaw and it'll pop right up. That is it. That is it. That is it for us. That's it for Ahsoka and Anakin for now. We'll see you next time here on Force Senate.